You better start growing that head, Ed. <laughs> what if my head just kept going up? I <laughs> guess anybody's head just continually grow upward. That's what. Marge Simpson. No. Oh, yeah. Cone heads. You, yes. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. Nope. That's a head. <laughs> you don't know what he kept under there. Have you ever seen a picture of that then? Yeah, on the five. What's that? Five dollar bill. <laughs> Well, they had to cut it so it would fit. Those are only three inches, right? Photoshopped. For sure. <laughs> Conspiracy. I wrote this in an hour and a half. Recorded it. Edited it. Here it is. Rock the beat. Episode 10.5, you need to open your eyes We out here arms spread, hoping to fly Owning the sky, no joke, all joking aside Every word coming out my mouth provoking your mind These are quotes from the dopest of guys That's me, Rexo, I'm approaching, overdosing on rhymes Let's go, we free, cut the ropes and the ties With the puppet master's knives, trying to control all our lives We ain't supposed to stay inside the lines Stay focused on the notion that they got us in an ocean of lies Drowning in motion, they just want us all token and high so they can keep a soft-spoken thoughts frozen in time, but not me. Welcome back to the Rock the Beat Studios podcast. It's ten and a half minutes past the hour. I'm your host, Rexo. At this graffitied door table, I'm joined by a few co-hosts. We have, to my left, Cassie, my wife. What, you wanted something <laughs> special? No, I was just making sure I was to your left. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Because <laughs> I'm to your right. This is going to be a good one. <laughs> to my right, we have Pat. Here at the RTB Pod, we know you have several different choices in the podcast in which you waste your time on, and you chose this one, so thanks for that. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. How is everybody tonight? Doing well. Not too bad. You ever say doing good, and then someone says, you say, doing good, how about you? Me and then, too. <coughs> and then they say, I'm well. And they're just basically telling you that you're an idiot for doing good. Yeah. I'd like to tell them, no, you're not. You're not doing well. You, what you did, what you're, you're supposed a jerk. to say is, Superman does good. You're doing well. <laughs> That's basically what they're trying to say when they say, I'm doing well, after you just said you were doing good. I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing well. No, go f*** <laughs> yourself. <laughs> Have you ever said... I'm doing good also. How about you? And then you realize that you just continued the conversation that they started. <laughs> but they ask you what your name is. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you lost me. Or if you have any questions about the menu. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't listen, but you thought for sure that they were going to ask if you were ready to order. You know, just the basic questions where you quit listening to people. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> autopilot. I'm on autopilot Did right you? now. How are you, Cassie? She's nervous about what to say now. <laughs> oh, we start this over again? Doing yeah. good. Doing well. Me too. How about you? <laughs> we be in. Today, I want to talk about construction. That is a good, good topic for the people here tonight. <laughs> for, the, for the host tonight, <laughs> I feel like we could deep dive into construction. Starting with... First, let's take a caller. <laughs> Just kidding. The phone lines are lit up. Let's call Pat. Let's FaceTime Pat. Jared's got this lady that keeps calling him. FaceTime. It's great. It's not me. It's another Pat. Oh, yeah. Sorry for the confusion. Her name's probably Patricia. 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 <laughs> Patricia. I have... I remember in uh, elementary school, I was in speech class because I had trouble with my R's, and I thought I had kicked it until recently on the podcast. I'm adding R's into all kinds of things. Rutabaga. I haven't noticed. Rutabaga. What and is that? It's rutabaga. Exactly. But what is it? It's like a vegetable. A root. Hmm. Of a bega. Speaking I don't, of. It's a combination of an onion or something. I already forgot. We actually had some growing up. <laughs> In your garden? <laughs> no, just in the backyard. I think somebody probably had it at one point. Someone had planted rutabaga in your backyard? Yeah. Did you eat it? Did you guys eat it? No. I didn't even like Did your dad? Then. Did your dad harvest it? It pro You know, it probably was him now that we think about it. Now that we think about <laughs> it. Now that we think about <laughs> now it. Now that we think about it. It was Bruce. <laughs> it was like Bruce's that, rutabaga. That tomato Kind of like when you figure out Santa Claus isn't real. Wait a minute. <laughs> it was <laughs> Bruce. That, we, that was Bruce too. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sherry. Mm-hmm. Sherry couldn't have been all of Santa Claus. She used to make my stuffed animals move while I was at daycare. She was the original elf on a shelf. <laughs> she was. <laughs> Good mom. For sure. If she could do it now, she would when we were at work. <laughs> <laughs> she has our house code, doesn't She'd she? Come, she can't remember it. Plus, now you have dogs, so they kind of move on their own. <laughs> <laughs> Some days. That's how it's all started. Some days they move. Some days they don't. So we watched this movie called The Lobster the other day. Because we've been on a Colin Farrell kick. Uh, we talked to the, uh, about it briefly. I think you should watch it. <laughs> I saw the preview for it. It's so funny because I'm always looking for that next show, that next movie that's going, that's really good that I can recommend to people. Uh, well, that's not it, but. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, but I think but you should I skip watch over it. them. I took a film class in uh, college, and I feel like those were the type of movies that they always made us watch. Fancy. And well, it was a real. I mean, it was a night class, and so we just watched movies all was the time. An, but was that an elective? Or part yeah. of your marketing degree. Well, no, I mean, it was a choice out of the... Yes, it was an elective out of my degree. But I felt like it was something that we would had to watch because it was so bizarre, but it had a deeper meaning. And if you were just watching it, playing on your phone, you wouldn't have noticed it, but it was really good So should I funny. watch it or no? Yeah, you should watch it, but don't... <laughs> I wouldn't watch it for... To be entertained. Okay. Don't watch, don't go into it thinking, they said this was going to be good. Because it's good, but in a different kind of way. Yeah. The it's, guy was trying to make a, a point about society. It had an underlying meaning. You don't have to look deep into it. It's just a weird movie. But it was really funny if you looked at it that way. Otherwise, you'd just be like, why did I just watch this? That's what we were like anyway. Why did we just watch this whole thing all the way to the end? I sort of laughed. It was funny. So, construction. <laughs> Yeah, finally. Sorry. At the table, there's like 40 plus years of residential construction experience here. Wait, does that count on how many you put on your plaque? Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. I don't know. Like, are y'all trying to make fun of me about that? Or? Yeah. Because. <laughs> I can't remember how long I it mean, was, but anything, you would have been like 13, right? So when will we cleaning houses with our mother and laying carpet with our father? That doesn't count as construction experience. If I can okay. count cleaning houses, it has been <laughs> different. Think different kind of stuff cleaning like houses. That is still in your mind about like when you're doing construction. Yeah, but it's not construction experience in my opinion. Like I count mm. how long I've since I bought my business license. That's how long you've been in business. Yeah. Not how long you've been in construction. Whatever. <laughs> There's a lot of experience here, and you know it. You know more than all of us. So let's let let me question you. Mm. On how to build a house. Wait. Oh, do we have a buzzer? Can I do this? <laughs> Today on the podcast, how to build a house from the dirt to the shingles. There's no math involved in this, right? A little bit. What kind of math are you wanting to avoid? All of it. All math? Math is so good. All right, Cassie will be our homeowner, buyer, home buyer customer purchaser Cassie, pick a place to build a house preferably some nice flat ground <laughs> the beach the beach we don't know Man. we don't know that, sand that construction even goes back to the bible not to build on sand <laughs> I didn't, that's your part to figure out we don't want to live we don't the beach. we don't do that i mean all right, we got to go. The lot down the street. You have to put piles in the ground until you hit bedrock. You got to go to bedrock at the beach. Pretty much. How deep is that? But you're you're I already at sea level, that. so bedrock is probably never been there before. To the beach? No, like driving piles into the ground. From the town of bedrock. <laughs> what about the um, the one house that survived the hurricane? The dome. No. no. But it did. It, what which dome? The dome no, the, on the peninsula. The one on the right? Really? That's the only one? Yeah. I mean, the only, well, no, the only dome. No, but it was it survived without damage. It's oh. Like a, it's like a turtle. Well, that's a real smart design for a house, but ugly as a turtle. Well, if they would have painted it like... A turtle? <laughs> that would have been much cooler. And the, the walkway leading up to it was a turtle with his mouth open. <laughs> <laughs> what else could they have painted it as? A boob. The hmm. sun? <laughs> <laughs> 
I bet Jim. Really? I bet Jim would want it to be a bald head. <laughs> it already hit. The, that's what it looks like already. It's kind of like a yeah. Yeah. Flesh tone. That's old bald head's house. It's kind of concave. Maybe they were going for a <laughs> golf ball. That's where Pat lives. <laughs> He's so funny. All right, so you get down to bedrock concrete. Let's not do the beach. All right. Ugh. There's a lot down the street. Well, then y'all, <laughs> y'all pick something you know. So. No, you're the customer. Where do you want to live besides the beach? Say the lot down the street. The lot down the street. But there's like a lake and a farm with llamas. <sighs> Are you more excited now? Horses. Yeah. There's horses there. Dogs running around everywhere. You've got four acres in, like the, a in the country. It's like a scene from Homeward Bound. This is all y'all's thing right now. <laughs> I'm just you going with it. I don't know what it is yet. All right. Step one. What's step one in building a house? Make sure your builder knows how to build on <laughs> that particular type of land. I mean, I guess you you have to do a soil test to make sure you can build on that land. See, I don't know about this part. If it's lava, then you can't do it. Get through all these logistics fast. Okay. Concrete guy comes out, forms up the foundation. No, but do we have like plans, right? Yeah. You gotta call Talk the to city, an architect right? for a long time. Yeah. The city's got to let you do it. Yep. You gotta get a permit. Yeah. I don't know, y'all wanted all this. Bureaucracy. That's what I'm saying. Let's get through all this. Let's <laughs> yeah. get through this bull <laughs> fast. Do a park test. Find out if you can build there. Flood zones and things like that. Yep. Get your uh, pervert test. permit. Get your plans <laughs> approved by the city. Cassie said pervert test. You want to do that in every neighborhood before you decide to spend your life there. That's true. Did y'all know you can look that up? There's a whole map. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, sex offenders have to be registered. Isn't that crazy? No, I think it's a good idea. Well, I know, but it's just crazy that you have a map that shows... Hey, this is where all the restaurants are and all the parks. Also, here's the sex offenders. What's first? Concrete. Call the concrete guys? Yep. What are they going to do? So if you're going to do a slab, they're going to form up the foundation, the exterior walls of the slab. They're going to put a little gravel in the slab. And then the plumbers will come out and run, run all their lines underneath the slab. So they, they dig how deep down the, the outside walls of your house. Uh, depending on how high you want your house, but the, the footers have to be 10 inches below your form boards and like 18 inches wide. There's an equation for it. Like your footer has to be... No math. Uh, double the width of your, the height of your footer. So if it's 12 inches tall, it has to be 24 inches wide. All right. I'm lost. <laughs> Next, we've got the footer of the house. The concrete is getting hard. <laughs> Concrete guys have come out. You also it out. have to go through two inspections before you can pour concrete for plumbing and uh, slab inspection. Oh, yeah. Your plumbers have your plans and they have put all the pipes where they need to be coming out of the floor. Mm -hmm. Correct? So the pipe is going to come out of the floor inside of a wall behind your sinks in your bathroom, out yep. of the floor inside the wall behind your sinks in your kitchen. Where your refrigerator needs a water line. Yep. And you also electrical conduit too. Oh, like God. Electrical conduit coming up in islands or floor plugs, stuff like that. So if your kitchen has an island and your kitchen island has an, an outlet for electricity. They have to have an outlet. They have to have an outlet. That's the new code. Mm -hmm. So you have to do that before concrete. Yep. Just the conduit though, not the wires. Right. The conduit is the pipe that the wires run through. Okay, so we've got concrete poured, we've got our electrical wires, we've got our plumbing out. What happens? So ideally you let the concrete cure for three days before you start framing. Not all production builders do that, mm -mm. but we let the concrete cure for three days and then let the framers start. And the framers have a huge package of wood delivered to the job site, all bundled up. And they have just the plans or they have special framing plans? Just plans. Just the regular blueprints? Mm-hmm. And they know what to do, kind of. If they have a, a truss package for the roof, do they just kind of guess where the trusses go, or the, are they labeled? No, are the they, trusses are labeled. They can kind of tell which gable is, goes where, and then the trusses follow each gable? No, each truss is individually labeled with a Sharpie, and then you have a plan, just individual, shows which number goes where. So your trusses are these huge triangles that are made at a truss factory, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't, I don't do trusses. Stick build. Mm -hmm. You build each triangle from scratch. That makes the pitch of the, the peak of the roof, the triangle that is your flat ceiling in your living room and the slopes of both sides of your roof on top. Right. I feel like we're doing great. <laughs> Are you lost yet, Cassie? This will be interesting for Sorry. a lot of people. 
Do you know where we are? You are in limbo, waiting on the plumbers to come. She All stopped right. listening a while ago. So framing takes anywhere from like a week, depending on the size of the house, a week to maybe three weeks a month. So if it takes a week, we're how far in? Two weeks no. with with everything going perfect? <laughs> no. No, you, all those inspections and stuff took a while? Yeah. <laughs> I can do one in like 112 days. So when, when they build a house in three days on TV, you don't believe it? Who does that on TV? <laughs> the actual record for building a house is like two hours and so many minutes from dirt to finish house no way it's on youtube i don't believe it how do you get it to dry that quick what's that the concrete they got a special special concrete how do you get sheetrock to dry for paint we can watch it after this it's really impressive i would rather just watch that than do this podcast <laughs> how do you get anybody to show up in time to get it done is it full two hours or are there cuts how did the city no, plan it's that cuts how do you dig the plumbing? Let's just keep going with what we're doing, and then <laughs> y'all can look that up later. Yeah, but I want to know. <laughs> it's uh, do they do a crown, lot of scheduling. They do crown molding? Probably not. Was it D.R. Horton? <laughs> <laughs> they build houses pretty fast. They closed 56,000-something last year. So after framing... After framing... You start your MEP rough ends. What's an MEP? MEP is mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. You down with MEP? Yeah, you know me. <laughs> so plumbers start first because their pipes are hard and they don't flex as easily. <laughs> okay, plumbers have hard pipes. So plumbers run all their lines through the house, mm -hmm. connecting their water lines from the slab, water and drain lines from the slab to the uh, drops. If you will. What's a drop? Like a toilet or a sink or a shower. So what do you mean? They run their water lines from up out of the slab to the sink or to the shower. But there's no sink yet. It's just raw studs and framing. Yeah, but you run your... So they're running them th up through the bottom of the wall, in inside the wall, right. behind where it's going to come out for a shower head right. or where it's going to come out for a shower. Or where a cabinet's going to be installed. And where the shower drain's going to be. Mm -hmm. Okay shower drains already in there from the slab so it's not it's not really connected to a shower or a sink or anything yet it's just up where it's no, inside the, the wall the at tubs the height. and the showers are installed at this time as well oh but not the because not like a tile shower no the fiberglass tubs and showers are installed at this time because they're too big to get in after the fact like after what sheetrock mm -hmm. so how do they get in before sheetrock because they just leave certain studs out to get certain things in? Or the framers install them? No, the tubs go in before sheetrock. I know, but sheetrock doesn't change the size of st the distance between no, they studs. Take, they take studs out so to plumber, get tubs in. Like a plumber will take a stud out to slide a tub through. Correct. And then put the stud back in? Correct. Gotcha. All right, we've got tubs in, still raw studs, no roof. You got roofers going yet? Yes. How, uh, the plumbers run their airflow pipes through vent, the, vent pipes yes through the roof and then the roofers can start and get their shingles and pipe boots so then the roofers can the do their thing around the pipe boots and everything else and the roofers all they do is the the paper and the shingles right uh, most of the time the framers put the felt paper down because it dries it in a little bit what do you mean dries it in so that it's the water's not getting in the house keeps it off the plywood they put on top of the trusses correct and then the roofers come and all they have to do is shingles yep how do they get them shingles up on top of the roof in they the either carry them or the roofing supplier puts them on the roof with a boom truck i've seen that boom truck that's why i asked it was really cool mm -hmm. they got one man on the roof and a boom truck a boom truck lifts a whole pallet of shingles to the roof and the roofer will be on the roof and unload them one pack of shingles at a time and it's if they pretty put too, effective if they put too many in one spot it'll mess up your trusses oh because the weight mm -hmm. it's made to be distributed mm -hmm. everywhere not all in one spot correct cool Good so then know. after plumbers mechanical oh. heating air comes in runs all their ducts and air registers and sets the units in the attic and but this or, is after roofers right yeah or before so you can call the plumbers first and then the roofers you can call the roofers during plumbing and heating heating and air at the same time yeah i wouldn't want to be 
inside of a house while it's getting shingles. We just had our roof replaced recently because of hail damage, and it's like a lot of nails happening above your head. Yeah. Sounds like the whole house is shaking. Also, I went inside my attic after they did it, and it's like little pieces of plywood everywhere mm-hmm. on top of the insulation. Looks like it. I got hit with one today. A piece of plywood? A little chip of a piece of plywood. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Did you keep it? No, it's just like a little flake of OSB came down and hit me in the head. LSD? OSB oriented OSB. oriented strand board. Strand board. That's plywood. Hmm. To yeah. uh, to us lames. Plywood is actually something different. Particle board. It's OSB particle board. Mm-mm. Something different too. Yep. Particles are smaller. <sighs> <laughs> you know this stuff. <laughs> You're hurting my brain. Well, what's MDF then? Medium density fiber board. What's HDF? High density. LDF? I, I've never heard of LDF, but I guess it would be low density. SDF? <laughs> Soft density. <laughs> D- I don't know. DMT? <laughs> we still don't know how to say the DMT real word. So then after HVAC, electricals, electricians. Electricians loaded. what? Plugs and switches and wires to the house. So they're putting the wires from the conduit in the floor and from the conduit in the garage where the panel is. Mm-hmm. They run from the panel throughout the house. Mm-hmm. And do they do this? If it's a slab, they're going to do most of this in the attic, right? Yes. It goes up the wall from the garage into the attic, spreads all across the house, and drops down in individual walls where there's a switch or a plug from the attic. And I guess some of them connect through the walls also somewhat plugs like if you come down from yeah, the attic like one bedroom will be like master bedroom will be on one breaker yeah so it drops down from the attic to the first plug and then bounces from that plug to the next plug to Correct. the next plug all through the walls that still don't have sheetrock it's still just studs mm-hmm. so it's getting more and more parts in this skeleton yes so so far we've got the roof done with shingles all the hvac duct work Duct work mm-hmm. with a T. Duct. Duct work. The units. Are the units in? The interior units are in. Yeah, you don't do those ones outside yet. So that there's a huge unit in your attic, and the duct work runs to each vent. Everywhere you see a vent, most of them on a slab house, they're going to be in the ceilings. So you have your your vents and your, your main trunk running through the attic, and all the vents, the smaller ducts come off that and go to the vents in the different bedrooms. And what makes a bedroom have to have a vent what's the code on vents in a bedroom i don't know if there's a code on where you have to have vents but there are codes about like what size vent has to be there just to get your hvac unit your system working properly but you do have to have smoke detectors correct in every room right and they have to be hardwired, battery backed up and chained together so when one goes off they all go off so we haven't done we still haven't done sheetrock in this house. Have the electricians run for the run wires for the smoke detectors? Yes. What do those wires look like? Are they smaller? Are they just uh, they still have the the normal wires that you would use for a plug, but they also have low voltage wires too. What's a low voltage wire? It's like a wire that can't shock you. <laughs> Lame. <laughs> <laughs> it's used for like your thermostat, your doorbell, your garage door sensors your smoke alarms okay hold on i need a break (laughs) (laughs) let me compose myself where are we at we have so then after rough ends what's a rough end quit using construction terms (laughs) that's when they roughed in the electrical wires so the wires are in and then you know duck work the blue box says that they put the wires to Mm -hmm. that's what that houses all the wires and allows you to connect a wall outlet or a switch Yep. Okay. So then we go through inspections. Oh, gosh. And plumbing now, each yeah. city is different. You have to call the city and say, hey, I'm, I've made it this far in construction. It's time for you to come make sure we did it right. Right. So the plumbing. Why can't the government just stay out of our lives? I <laughs> don't know. It's good. It's a good thing. You got to look at it as a good thing. Yeah, make sure. That way, from now on, when you buy a house built after this year, if... It was built legally, which you can't, you almost can't get away with it. They have people that ride around looking for construction happening Mm -hmm. to bust. Trash can people do it. Who? The trash can people. 
I'm not kidding you. The people that pick up your green trash cans, oh my if they see God. you doing construction, they tell on you. All right. We have to stop this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I have to write this down. This is going in the song. <laughs> trying to ruin I my life. I never thought of that before, <laughs> but it is that is a thing. So not only nah, they're just snitches. Yep. I got it. <laughs> I got you. I wondered whenever I was remodeling Charity Lane, I know I had a bright yellow dumpster out front, but I wondered who was the snitch. <laughs> That's hilarious. We weren't trying to get away with it. We just didn't even know we had to have a permit for a remodel, but we did. So we went and got a permit, paid a little fine. I think it was six hundred dollars. Mm. All right, we've got inspections called in. How long does that take for the city of Huntsville to make it out? They usually make it out in about two days. So the plumbing, the in the city of Huntsville where I build, the the plumbing inspector comes out. He's pretty quick. Mechanical inspector comes out. He's pretty slow, and he's a not very nice. And then the electrical inspector comes out. He's pretty quick. And then after those three inspections are done, I have to request my inspection, which is called a pre-installation inspection. Who's so that by? The building inspector will come out and look around the house. He looks at the framing mostly. He'll make some notes if he sees anything that needs to be fixed or corrected or adjusted. And um, he'll either fail it if it's something real bad or pass it. And then I can insulate. So Wait. Are you comfortable enough with your electricians or HVAC guys that they can say, we'll be done tomorrow, so you go ahead and call in an inspection because you know it'll be two days, or do you wait till they're absolutely done and you pre-inspect it before you call it in? They request their own inspections because they have to pull their own permits. Oh, so they want to make sure they're done. Yeah. Because what happens if they fail an inspection? In the city of Madison, if they fail it more than once, they have to pay a re-inspect fee. So what about Huntsville? They're pretty lenient on us, but if we really mess something up, they're going to... They're going to what? They're going to make us pay a re-inspect fee. Well, not us, but the the contractors. Okay. So now you've got your inspection, pre-insulation inspection. So they'll come out. What are they looking for? Who? The pre-insulation people. It's the building inspector. He just looks at framing. Who does he work for? He works for the city also. Okay. There's a plumbing inspector, a mechanical inspector, electrical inspector, and building inspector. I'm glad there's not a trim inspector. <laughs> <laughs> there is. <It's> a <laughs> building inspector. <laughs> it's staircases and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Hold on. What is it? What are you doing? There was an article that said, text your boyfriend, I want a baby, and screenshot the, the response. And this person said, I want a baby. And her boyfriend said, like, for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> They're all super duper great. The last one before that one said, we have, like, $12 combined. <laughs> <laughs> that was the response. <laughs> Sorry, continue. Mm. All right. Thanks for that break. Patrick was melting my brain. Next. So, building inspector comes out, passes the pre-installation, and we can insulate the house. Spray foam, caulking, insulation. So, all that insulation goes in, and they had to inspect it because that insulation covers up a lot of mm-hmm. things they can't see ever again. Correct. All those wires in the walls, exterior walls, any of that, all the plumbing, those inspectors, you'll never be able to see if anything is wrong again. Because now that is in spray foam, if they did spray foam, or, or bad insulation if they did that in the walls. Mm-hmm. Next, we got the house insulated, ready for sheetrock, right? Yep. So, when the day your insulators are finished, you want your drywall to be delivered, and then you go through more inspections. Wow. So, they did that pre-insulation, and like I said, the building inspector will make notes about stuff. So, you have to get that stuff fixed before your framing inspection. The framing inspection is after the pre-insulation? Correct. What's the framing inspection about? (laughs) Fra- and why didn't that happen after framing? You mean like the r- immediately after framing? Yeah. Because your roughing people will mess stuff up. Oh, to get the tub in. Yeah. To, so to run. You, your framing inspection is right before drywall. And any notes that he made on the pre-insulation inspection, you need to have fixed. So when he comes back, you'll pass your framing inspection. But he also looks at the, dr- the insulation too. Okay. So insulation's in. 
sheetrock is there or it's not there, but it's not in, it's not installed. It's just there. Right. And then stopped in the house. You have to request your energy inspection. And what's an energy inspection? <laughs> God, you're making me wish I just bought a house. I know. Huntsville Utilities comes out and looks for looks at the insulation to make sure the house is insulated properly. Oh yeah, you got to have a certain thickness on that insulation. Yep. And they look at draft areas, like what's in between first and second floors. What's that mean? You don't have to insulate between, like, if you had a room above the room you're in, you don't have to insulate in between that. But you have to make sure there's no draft flowing in between the first and second floor. Like, how could that be happening? How could a draft happen? Like, if there was an opening between the first and second floor, there would be a draft going in between it. What kind of opening is what I'm saying? A crack. Your ceiling joists. Like, if your ceiling joists are 16 inches on center, you got air flowing to that 16 inch space yeah but you're fixing to put sheetrock well it can come in from the attic okay <laughs> i don't get it but wouldn't it be better for them because they make money off of you using too much energy yeah but that's they're not we're, we're trying to conserve energy in this day and age they're gonna make their money they're not worried about you using a little extra right. energy we want to we want to save energy what save as a our, people yeah and save as a, as a species money. I don't know about that. Well, they sure they sure make us do a lot to conserve energy. They just want your money. True. Okay. So after those two inspections, you are ready Wait, to you're hang not, drywall. You're not two inspections in. Well, how I, many inspections have we done? <laughs> Did we keep going? 129,605. So far, we've done seven. Good grief. And we're about a, a month or two months in. No, yeah, about a six weeks, seven weeks. So not quite two months. Mm-mm. All right. Sheetrock is moving, ready to go. Moving good. What's the first step you do when the sheetrockers start hanging? Me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing. Tell them to go hang at the house with drywall. I know, but who do you call? My painter. What? All painters do their own drywall. That way there's no pointing fingers. No, I'm talking about once your drywallers, once your sheetrockers start hanging sheetrock, who do you call? <coughs> oh, I call my uh, trim supplier. That's, no, that's still not me. <laughs> 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 Who's your trim supplier? <laughs> the person who supplies the trim. Yeah. This, like the same as the person who supplied the sheetrock. That's not going to be the person who's hanging your sheetrock, right? Mm-hmm. So the sheetrockers are hanging sheetrock. They're getting it going. You've ordered, you got your trim ordered. You're like, hey, we're hanging sheetrock. Bring the trim on this date. Mm -hmm. Then the trim comes and you call your trim carpenter. Correct. And your trim carpenter says, you should have called me last week. (laughs) I have a busy schedule. But I did already. (laughs) I asked you. You said no. (laughs) I called the trim supplier. (laughs) So I'm not your trim carpenter, but when you call a trim carpenter, wait, no, sheetrock's done. They hang it first, then what? Then they mud it with the so, drywall mud. Then, depending on weather or or uh, t- temperature, I guess that's weather. Mm-hmm. I guess I'll just blanket statement. The weather can make that last a lot longer. It can add a couple of days to it if it's too cold. Yeah, if it's cold or super wet, then the mud will dry slower. And the mud has to dry before they can sand. Then they sand it. Yeah. And then the trim comes. And you're, your trim carpenters install it. You're really breaking down drywall a lot. <laughs> well, we didn't break down anything else. We're getting right? into the parts that I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, this is when I might see a house. Yeah. When drywall starts. That's part of my life where a house starts for me. <laughs> right. So then trim guys come. They trim the house. Baseboards, crown molding, hang the doors. No inspection between sheetrock and trim, right? Right. They don't care if your walls are smooth or not. No. That's up to your quality service Mm -hmm. quality control people so sheet rockers do that trim trim carpenters me that's what i do rexo Mm -hmm. hang the doors run the baseboard crown mold anything extra staircases oak treads balusters all that then painters paint one paint one what's that mean i know that i just did trim one first paint so first paint i didn't know there was a second is that after trim two Mm -hmm. oh makes sense there's actually like three paints but so the painters come in and paint, caulk everything, paint everything. Then who's after paint one? So after paint one, we do cabinets. 
the cabinet guys, and they have been building these cabinets for the past two or three weeks, probably. Yes. In their shop, and yes. they pull up with a box truck. If they're, I mean, if they're custom cabinets, I guess. <laughs> they pull up with a box truck, unload them, install them, hang them on the walls. And then what? So then, after cabinets are done, um, the tile guys come in and set their tile. Tile guys. And and that's just like in. Usually, it's usually wet areas. Bathrooms, kitchen. bathrooms, laundry room. No, not really kitchens unless it oh, yeah. just depends on what you want. Really, are doing lots of hardwood and kitchen these mm-hmm. days. So, tile guys, my tile guys can do all of our houses in one day. Right. And then not showers though, right? No, those are later. Well, they not much later, but yeah, they don't do those in one day. Or the, even the first day, right? I thought they seem like they're always happening a little bit later. Mm-hmm. They're just not that crucial to the schedule. Right. So get the floors in. So tile, tile grouted. Cabinets, tile, and hardwood is a three-day process for me. So boom, boom, boom. Yep. Cabinets in, tile in, next day hardwood comes. Yep. And then you want trim too. Yes. So then the trim carpenter comes back. I go back. Finishes up baseboard up to cabinets. I finish the baseboard to the cabinets. Quarter that, round. Cabinets weren't there the first time, but they're there now, so i got to add those extra pieces. Quarter round or shoe or a shoe molding, depending on what you want. That goes on the baseboard where there's hardwood or tile. Install doorknobs since the doors have been painted now. Yeah, now the doors are painted. I install Installed the doorknobs. Front porch columns. You know, we, we've we missed, I've kind of messed up because I've missed a lot on the outside. Yeah, we left the outside <laughs> for a minute. So once you pass that pre-insulation inspection, you are cleared to start brick. Oh man, your house is still just studs outside. Yeah. So, but not really because the pre-insulation. House wrap. You're not really hanging drywall yet. Yeah. So you pass the pre-insulation inspection, you can start brick. Or whatever, drywall. whatever your outside of your house is. Right. Hardy board, right. brick, or vinyl. So brick and drywall are usually going up at the same time if your job is running right. Gotcha. And then once the brick is done, you want to try to get your driveway poured. And the best time to get your driveway poured is when the painters are in there. And? Because they're not carrying tools in and out and stuff like that. Do the driveway guys do uh, the grading of the yard and stuff also? Um, no. Not the concrete guys, but... But the the concrete guys have to have a lot of knowledge of grading, and they still have to use transits and stuff to make sure that your the, driveway is sloped properly. You don't want the water running into your garage. Mm-hmm. Who does? Who gets all that dirt flat in the front yard? When does that happen? After the driveway's done. The driveway goes in first. Mm-hmm. Well, they'll come out and do a rough grade, which is, you know, it's a construction site, so there's dirt everywhere trash everywhere and they'll come out and do a rough grade and kind of get the yard where it needs to be Mm -hmm. and then you'll do irrigation if your house gets irrigation Mm -hmm. and then after irrigation you'll do a final grade and get the yard real nice and smooth and ready for sod and the outside is at this point is you know you really are depending on weather when it rains no one comes Mm -hmm. that's with framing too though right and roofers your whole and schedule also, can get thrown. Ideally, when you're trim guys in the house, you're doing your vinyl and metal soffit on the outside. Yeah, I was going to say, when, when you said I needed to set columns, my first thought was, is the vinyl done? Right. And then I was like, we didn't even talk about vinyl or metal. Yeah. So are we caught back up outside? Yeah. Driveway is poured. Sheetrock is done inside and painted. All the trim is done. Crown molds. The cabinets are in, the trim is finished to the cabinets, the shoe mold is done because all the floors are finished, the shower finally got finished, mm-hmm. the tile showers. So uh, you got to call a glass guy now, right, for the showers? Right. They come out and measure for your shower doors and your closets and stuff like that. And the glass guy will also do your closet shelving, the wire shelving and me, stuff like do. that. Yeah. Sometimes your trim carpenter will, if you're but fancy. You also start your set outs. What's a set out? Set out is like... Fancy word for... <laughs> finishing up so the plumbers did a rough in and now they're going to do a set out they're going to set your faucets and your toilets oh. and your plumbing fixtures so now that cabinets are in you've called a granite guy i forgot the granite and marble tops yeah so after cabinets go in they come out and template your countertops template template i think you said tiplet <laughs> i think so too just the tiplet you didn't have to call me out though yeah so countertops <laughs> are in tile showers done um ready for plumbing fixtures after hardwood is done and trim punch usually i do trim punch and electrical set out at the same time 
where they install the plugs and the switches and the light fixtures. And once your driveway is poured, you are ready for your mechanical set out. They'll come out and set the exterior units and they'll put the air registers on the ceiling and they'll install the air return. You went too fast past electrical set out. Electrical set out is like, how long does that take? A day, two days tops. So those guys are, the wires that they have in the walls and their plugs, they're putting on the switches, the plate covers and all that. Yep. They're putting the plugs in, plate covers, light fixtures, the can lights are getting there, their little trim pieces, they're hanging chandeliers if they have to. Mm-hmm. What else? Microwaves? Is that them? Mm-mm. Is that uh, ovens? For me, it's just an appliance guy. Comes out and does that. A different but, guy does appliances. Yeah. So a microwave... It's towards the end because you don't want your appliances getting stolen. Yeah, you definitely want your trim carpenter to get those deadbolts on the exterior doors. Yeah. Or whoever installs them. But yeah, the uh, once the trim carpenter's done with his uh, trim punch, the painters come in for a paint final, and they're getting the final coat of paint on everywhere. So painters are in. We're you're pretty much done. Who have, when's that part where you go through with the roll of blue tape and just explode a smurf all over everything? That's after paint final. So after the painters are done, mm-hmm. you're like, hey, let me show you everything you missed. Yeah. But we blue tape a house like three times. Yeah, just to, just to make sure. Yeah. Because you can think it's done, and then a homeowner will walk in and find a hundred more things because yeah. they're the ones giving you their entire life, the next thirty years of their life. Yeah. In payments, they're gonna make <laughs> sure everything is right, and I don't disagree with them. Mm-mm. So paint it, and then find everything wrong, and then paint it again, and then find everything wrong, and fix everything they want. Then what? So also, after mechanical, electrical, and plumbing yeah, set you, you didn't say done. what mechanical set outs were. They set the HVAC units outside on the concrete. The big round. The air registers on the ceiling, the return airs. And air registers, that little metal thing. Mm-hmm. Metal vent where the air comes out. Why is it called a register? I don't know. What's that thing behind you called? The return. The return is the where you change your filter? Yeah, that's where Speaking the air. Of which, we got to change our filter. In case the air comes in. 20 by 30, that's our size. Have you looked at it lately? Uh-uh. You don't want to. Exactly. <laughs> we got to change it. It's not good. Where's Pearl? So then after all those setouts are done, you go through more inspections. What inspections now? Oh, is this when they fill your staircase? <laughs> yeah. Well, you do a plumbing final inspection. Right. You do a mechanical final inspection. And you do, actually, when the electri- electrical is done... Mm-hmm. They do a temp 30 inspection. What does that mean? What do the plumbers do to inspect it? Just make sure n- nothing's leaking and everything is installed. Do they flush something down there and see if they find it on the other end? No. Tell us tell us about that. Those guys that come in and put little red things over the returns and seal the doors. That's coming. Okay. What? <laughs> I'm so excited. Who is it? You'll see. Tonsville Utilities. So temp 30 inspection is you've got most of your electrical fixtures in and you're ready to get power turned on from the temp pole to the house. And they drop the temperature to and 30 you, degrees. The temp 30 is you get a uh, temporary power for 30 days until you get permanent power. So in between that, you get the temp power on the house. You have to get your final inspection, a final electrical inspection to get permanent power on the house. So when they turn the temp power on, do you want your electricians there? No. To make sure before you have the inspection? They're there. They know it has to be done. They request their own inspections, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So electrical final's done, and then after all those finals are done, you're ready for your building final. When the inspector, building inspector comes out and looks at smoke detectors and staircases and anything that he sees at the end. What's the dumbest thing you've been failed for before? On the building final? Yeah. The house was locked. When he got there? Yeah. <laughs> It happens all the time. <laughs> he like, is he not allowed to have asshole, a construction I, I have to put my phone number down on the inspection when I request it online, and he won't pick up his phone to call somebody, even though I'm in the subdivision all day. It's like, why do you have to put your phone number down? Right. Well, first of all, why is the house locked? You don't want things to get stolen? Well, yeah. But you're in the subdivision, though. Well, it, it, like if he showed up that morning and we hadn't unlocked the house yet. Well, you always unlock the house. It's first thing, right? Well... My punch guy's supposed to, but sometimes he doesn't. I saw McMurray the other day in his yellow truck. He beeped at me. <laughs> I gave him the peace sign, and then he waved, and then I waved. Also, it, on the outside, after the final grade's done, you get your plants installed. You get your sod installed. When do you pressure wash the driveway? 
after sod. Before plants? Plants go in before sod, ideally. Why? Because you sod up to your flower beds. All right, so flower beds are in. What kind of what kind of break do you have in the between flower beds and sod? Sometimes we do a brick landscaping wall if the homeowner selects it. If not, it's just a little pine metal. straw to sod. No metal. No swirly thing. I don't like pine straw as a flower bed cover. So once your your final your building final inspection is done, you um, have to do an energy inspection where the energy guys that did the before drywall uh-huh. they come back out and do a blower door test. This is the Huntsville Utility guys. Mm-hmm. All right, listen, Cassie. I'm listening. Tell them what they tell Cassie what they do. So they go through and they put this clear tape over air returns and they put these covers over the air registers and then they hook up a fan that pretty much covers up the whole back door Mm -hmm. and they suck air out of the house to see how airtight and energy efficient the house is and gravity leaves also like a spaceship and you can feel air coming if you if you're there while they're doing it you can feel feel air coming through like plugs and he pass out and you can feel it coming through windows and casings and everywhere they're they're like vacuuming the correct creating a vacuum of the house so what that does is give them their hers index score to see how energy efficient the house is well at that point what and we do very well it, on those tests if it doesn't do good what are you going to do you have to fix it that's why they do the pre-installation the the pre-installation inspection to make sure it's right before they get to that point point. and it's at this point where you say uh-oh if you fail that one yeah have you ever failed one of them yeah. What'd you do? Well, it, usually it's a real Tape. obvious thing, like their air return is not sealed properly, and it's like causing, mine. It's causing an air leakage, but it's usually a simple fix. So yeah. there's a lot of little things that go on in between all the other stuff, and all that is like according if everything goes to plan, you're not missing any material or nothing gets stolen, and you're not short material, and everyone does their job correctly. And yeah, it sounds good. Like we just we just did it in about an hour, but that's not doesn't really work. Doesn't really go as planned. Have you got better at a? I don't know how bad you were, but I was always <laughs> bad at ex- like planning my whole day the night before. And then getting to work, and the very first thing that was supposed to happen just goes completely wrong. Yeah. And you're like, I used to just be mad the rest of the day. But now, when I go to work, I'm like, what's going to go wrong first? I'm ready for it. Got the mental control now to control my angers and take on whatever the heck life throws at me. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff like people not showing up and be, you have to be able to problem solve real quick and if somebody doesn't show up you know you move your schedule around and you bring people in and switch stuff up like, yeah you're not really like in in construction you're not really employing the the most the best employees right the best humans <laughs> so the cleaners come and they clean the house like five times before the house I was, I was gonna say you forgot about the yeah. the cleaning crew the cleaners kind of come towards the end do a rough clean do a thorough clean do a touch-up clean then you do your quality walk and you do another touch-up clean you do your homeowner walk and then you do another touch-up clean and then you close the house you're probably thinking right now how many cleans do you need but it's a lot of cleans you need a lot of cleaning well it's important that you have the the house standing tall and clean for the homeowner walk and the quality walks and stuff like that yeah plus the homeowners want to come at all times so yeah if you could if you could force all of your subcontractors to do one thing, just clean after yourself. Yeah. Let me uh, tell you something. Why do you why do you clean up so much your job sites more than other people? I got yelled at a lot. <laughs> because our dad made us do it a lot. Yeah, but I little. got so but is that experience the real experience to play for you no, from when you were no, little? Oh come on. No. I ain't giving that to dad. I'm I'm calling it on Jason number one. When I first started, I was working for him in the beginning and the first time he told me about cleaning up, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I did. And he's like, oh, no, that's not what we mean by clean up. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, whatever. And then next time I didn't do it again, then you get yelled at worse. And then you're like, you've never to had fired. to fill out a resume. What do you mean? You've never had to fill out a resume. I filled out a resume. Put, out, put experience on your resume. No, I don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> See? If you had 10 years, it helps. I think my experience speaks for itself. <laughs> 
you better believe if I ever fill out a resume, I'm putting <laughs> podcast host on it. <laughs> <laughs> Rapper, podcast host, vlog maker, vlogger, whatever, wedding, wedding videographer. So before we even start building, we do a pre-construction conference with the buyers, mm-hmm. and we kind of go over a lot of stuff about expectations, go over plans and well, stuff. Well, now you got a podcast to be like, just listen to this. Right. <laughs> and, Don't tell uh, them. <laughs> They'll back out. <laughs> and um, we give them a date, a closing date, and I would say probably 95% of the time we hit those dates. Yeah, well, you know, you know how to build a house. Yeah, but there's a lot of stuff. That can go wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whether... Yeah, but you plan for that too, kind of. Yeah, I'm sure. There's like, rain what's days. the what's the the farthest you've been past a closing date, and what's the farthest you've been under a closing date? Worst case and best case scenarios. I've probably moved a closing date a month before, but it was when I first started, and it was also a crawl space house, which is takes longer. That's not the slab. That's just the foundation and then floor joists, right? Mm-hmm. Then you can have floor registers on your heating and air. Yeah, but I like them in the ceiling because that way you're not. You know, your furniture doesn't cover a f- air register. Or your bathroom sink. Yeah. Like mine's coming out of both of my toe kicks. Mm-hmm. What's the earliest you'd be your closing date? Probably a couple of weeks. We, we rarely move them up just because we always have closing dates scheduled for other people. So if we move it up, we have to be able to get all our homeowner walks and stuff in at the same time, mm-hmm. which there's already other homeowner walks scheduled. So we rarely move them up. Also, that's like a big thing, too. It's not just, oh, your house is done. Move in. Right. You got to go through some stuff. Cassie and I went to our closing. Remember we went and had beers first? We were like, let's, let's do this. We just signed stuff. It wasn't like it was anything to do. We bought a house. Well, we did. Okay. We closed 51 houses last year. You did? Mm-hmm. You know how many months are in it? It's or, actually a record for Jeff. You know how many home. weeks are in a... 52. You going to get 52 this year? No. I yeah, there's, the there's, there's, they're slowing down this that. year, aren't they? Maybe 2020 I might get it. <laughs> That's a good look. Good look ahead. Mm-hmm. Well, next subject. <laughs> <laughs> you really threw that one on me. That one didn't come up in pre-production at all. Which part? Construction. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, how to build a house. I figured that'd be a good one. You got here and you're like, what are we going to pod about? I was like, I don't know. I got no pods. We're, <laughs> we're way past time. I was just going to pod for 30 or 40 minutes. It's estimated like to build a house involves over 700 people, like 700 plus people. What? Are you counting like me and my whole crew I'm also? Every, like I have, this is like a stat that I've heard mm-hmm. in the industry, but it's like everyone from like the people on the lumber yard putting the package together. Right. Everyone that builds the interior doors before they can, and the cabinets that come to you. And the inspector that answers the phone or the inspector secretary right. that answers the phone and schedules it. Everybody. Yeah. Right. So much more respect for the Amish. Why? Yeah, why? Because they got like 50. 50 what? People. They don't do electrical stuff. <laughs> <laughs> With an old wooden hammer. <laughs> and a long beard. Dovetails. That's where they keep their tools. They're good framers. That's about it. They build wonderful swings. <laughs> they do. For your front porch. And furniture. Let's see. Who did you forget? Uh, the doorbell guy. I forgot a lot, actually. Well, they're going to be sad. Guy. You better place people. Let's call them out while we're people. here. I mean, there's a there's a lot. Shout out to the it. fireplace people. Shout out to the appliance people. We didn't talk about gas. What have gas inspections and the mechanical heat and air people do the gas? Who's got gas? Oh my god! Natural gas. Is that not the feces city of- pieces. <laughs> this is a feces piece. Everybody. Uh, ear muffs. <laughs> the next uh, thirty minutes. Also, I took pictures of a house today, and the porta potty was flipped upside down. From the wind. Like upside down or on its side? Well, it was on its side, but it was on a hill, so it was also kind of at an angle, so... Oh, so whoever was in there got the blue water. All right. You want to take us out of this one, or you want me to do it? You're still awake. Thank you for listening. (laughs) (laughs) To 10.5? There you go. Of Rock the Beat Podcast. Join us on the next one when we talk about things that are unrelated to construction. (laughs) This was an informative podcast. podcast. How to build a house with a Rock the Beat Studios podcast.
Thank you for tuning in. AP. AP. If you if you feel like we got something wrong, <laughs> hit us at rtbpod at gmail.com. That's rtbpod at gmail.com. We would love to hear how you build a house. We forgot about carpet. <laughs> <laughs> Does it match the drapes? <laughs> That's he forgot drapes too. We uh, drapes. We um. <laughs> what is it? What did our dad do for his entire adult life? <laughs> <laughs> Laid carpet. <laughs> carpet and all kinds of floor covering. Just rolled in shame. I bet dad is screaming at the top of his lungs. What about the carpet? Finally, <laughs> you said the words carpet. <laughs> a dying breed. Carpet's dead. Who cares about carpet? Sorry, Millie, Dad. Millie loves it. Look at her. <laughs> Dogs love carpet. Mildred's just flipping and flipping and turning. So good. Sausage on stilts. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed it as much as Cassie did. Follow or friend us on Facebook at Rock the Beat Studios Podcast. Follow us on Twitter at RTB Pod. That's at RTBPOD. Email us at RTBPod at gmail.com. Happy St. Patty's Day. Rock the beat. You've been listening to the podcast. Now it's over. I wrote this here just so we could have closure. RTB took you on an odyssey as we headed out the bar like a walk off home. This is the end. This is the end. If you still listen in, you can probably turn it off now. Unless you're looking for these outro bars, then I'ma go hard to the neighbors call the cops. And I gotta tell them, hey, I know Deputy Dave and Bobby G say, let Wrestle Quozo play. Play, play. You've been listening to the podcast, now it's over, I told you Turn it off, but you're still here I suppose I can keep putting flows in your ears Till you're bleeding out your nose or until you can't hear I suppose I should let you know about the email RTBpod at gmail Hit us up, let us know if you think we fail Tell us why, don't leave out a single detail Cause we need the criticism, we need you to tell us When we need to do it different, just bring it to our attention You know our minds been living in different dimensions And it might be time to bend and switch up the rhythm I don't know, I can't say It's all I wrote for the outro, so hey, thanks for listening And it says goodbye and I hate to say this every time, but subscribe. You win. Perfect.